Good morning and welcome to the Liners Corporation quarterly briefing for the period ending 31 December 2018. Presenting the briefing today are Amanda Lacaz, CEO, Guardian Sturzenegger, CFO, and Andrew Arnold, General Counsel and Company Secretary. I'll now hand over to Amanda Lacaz. Please go ahead, Amanda. Uh, good morning, everybody, or actually, I think for Australians, just good afternoon. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. For our first call now as a mining, quarterly call as a mining production entity. So you will have noted that we have lodged our normal quarterly activity report, but we are no longer required to lodge a cash flow report in the form of an Appendix 5B. Um, given the, the fact that we uh, are making this transition, we thought it was still uh, important that we lodged our report in substantially the same form as we have done previously. Um, so that you've got a clear ability to compare um, results. Of course, the more important results will be uh, the uh, half yearly results which will be which will be releasing at the end of next month. In terms of to today's report, uh, as always, I think some of you thought we'd probably do better and some of you thought we'd probably do worse. On balance, we think it was a positive quarter for Linus. Uh, production and sales performance remained strong despite the temporary disruptions and the regulatory matters that we had to deal with in Malaysia during the period. There were some really significant um, highlights uh, for, for us. The most important, I think, is actually the launch of the new product, and we included a photo of this in the uh, report. And this is separated ND, and you'll see it's a rather fetching shade of uh, or sort of a lilac-y sort of a colour, or the, the more, more, actually more, probably more heading towards indigo, a, a bluey-purple colour. Um, it's really very exciting to be able to launch um, a, a new and valuable product of this sort. The first production and the first sales were delivered during the quarter with a number of shipments made. And the addition of separated ND and PR to our product range is important because a number of our customers, it allows us to meet um, more of their rare earths needs. And that means that we're increasing our share of wallet with those customers. <coughs> One of the things which is very pleasing for us is that our skilled Malaysian team has designed a separation process that is much more cost effective than the process which was originally incorporated in the plant's um, initial design. For those of you who have, vi who have visited, the initial design uh, envisaged the use of what was then SX8, which is on the second floor of the phase two solvent extraction area. Uh, this is uh, uh, over 100 separation stages, which would have included a huge amount of hold up of uh, both PR and ND. Um, the team has actually uh, executed a design which is much shorter, has much less hold up, and it's somewhere just over the 40 stages, I think. This is another real example of the value that we bring to Malaysia by way of developing IP and also upskilling our workforce. The second really positive uh, outcome during the quarter was the fact that we produced over 600 tonnes. In fact, October, in October, in fact, it was by far our highest production um, month. For, and it was the second consecutive month after the 600 tonnes in September. And that gives us confidence we can sustainably produce at that rate once we uh, are, are feeding on a consistent basis. Of course, balancing this, is the fact that production in November and December was significantly affected, uh, partly by the final commissioning of the ND and PR separation processes I mentioned above, 
uh, for a little more colour. That entailed the shutdown. We covered this in the quarterly report, but it, it, it entailed the shutdown of one of our SX5 separation trains uh, for a period of time to actually complete mechanical tie-ins and then of course it took some time for those batteries to balance for the new production process. Um, and more significantly throughput was affected by the production halt in December when we reached the annual approved limit for processing of lanthanide concentrate. Uh, as we've identified the kilns were shut down for virtually a full month we still had some production during December as we extracted every last bit of um, work in progress, um, all of our material that we, you know, we, we had our storage tanks full coming into the shutdown, um, but uh, still the December production was uh, very low. We used that time productively for work that can't be done while the plant is operating. Um, it's the only complete shutdown of the plant since it commenced operation in 2013 and so therefore it provided us with a good undertake, uh, opportunity to undertake some particular t tasks, for example cleaning the inside of tanks that we would not have um, been otherwise to do. We planned the start-up carefully, but of course, given this was the only shutdown, we weren't certain how the plant would respond after being shut down for such an extended period of time. Production did start on schedule at the start-up of January, following a brief ramp-up in the prior week. In the market, the Chinese domestic published price remained low at an average of uh, 39.4 US dollars per kilo during the quarter. The softness in price is balanced for Linus by continuing strong demand from the global manufacturing supply chain. Uh, demand for Linus NDPR has always been secure, but I'm Really pleased to say that we now have 100% of our lanthanum output committed via long-term customer contracts as well. Sales revenue at 79.9, let's say 80 million Australian dollars, was a creditable performance given the lost production, um, which we estimate was worth probably in excess of about 25 million in revenue. The sales result was off the back of record sales volume, however, with a skew towards lower value products, um, which we uh, serviced by drawing down inventory. The average selling price per kilo was lower than in the preceding quarter. When we think about cash utilisation, uh, our cash usage included the continued funding of Linus Next projects. Only one key project remains in Kwantan, which is an extension to one of our uh, tunnel furnaces, uh, the one we use for lanthanum, which allows us to um, uh, control quality uh, better. Mount Weld still has a number of projects in train and work is expected to continue over the next six months. Um, I hasten to say this is a timing effect only with no change in scope. And mining campaign three commenced as planned and we included a photo of blasting um, for removal of overburden in the report. We serviced some key liabilities during the quarter including the six month interest payment and the penultimate payment um, associated with the AELB PDF security deposit bringing the total security deposit paid to date to 42.2 million US dollars. As everyone is aware, the regulatory environment in Malaysia presented us with many challenges in the December quarter. Positive outcomes in the quarter included the publication of the review committee report, which found Linus operations to be low risk, safe and compliant. Balancing the positive report of the review committee was the advice from the Ministry that the renewal of the company's operating licence due on the 2nd of September 2019 would be subject to a new precondition that required all stored WLP to be exported from Malaysia. 
Uh, Linus has lodged an appeal against this condition and is continuing discussions with the Malaysian government to seek to resolve these issues. I know that the continuing uncertainty uh, relating to the regulatory environment is difficult for many of our shareholders, but we are engaging effectively with the Malaysian government uh, and we believe we will find a mutually acceptable position. Business continues as usual in this quarter and um, we're cautiously optimistic um, about where we will finish the quarter. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. And our first questionnaire is from Cathy Mo uh, Moses from Patterson's. Please ask your question, Cathy. Happy New Year, Amanda. I've got, got, got a few sort of more broad brush questions. Just uh, with the appeals process, are you allowed to continue business as usual whilst that appeals process plays out? And on the same sort of vein, given you haven't got your, your permitting approvals for, for next, I presume you're going to continue to run at the next expanded capacity uh, and on the expectations that that will be approved in, in due course. And then the final question with the, the lower price received, I know you said you delayed um, sales of the, the heavy rare earths, but I'd presume that you also delayed some sales of your NDPR uh, in preference to selling lanthanum and cerium over that period. Uh, thanks, Cathy, and Happy New Year to you too. Um, so yes, uh, we can continue on a business as usual basis during the appeal process. So the letter is uh, explicitly related to the renewal of the licence, not to a variation of current licence conditions. Uh, the second point, which is uh, yet to receive um, some of the approvals, or only really the one key approval related to the uh, increase in processing um, volume for lanthanide concentrate, to consistently produce the 600 tonnes per month. Um, we, we definitely are proceeding on the basis of, of producing um, 600 tonnes per month, bearing in mind that a 28-day month will produce less than a 31-day month. I sort of have to say that. Cam likes to remind me of that. Um, but nonetheless, we'll certainly be working on that basis and our expectation is that with the improved recoveries uh, that we're seeing, um, that, that will help us to bridge some of that gap as well. Uh, the third question, um, no, we didn't significantly hold back. I mean, we finished with more inventory than we normally would simply because of the timing of the way in which we uh, managed the shut. Uh, we, we shut down in early December and we made sure we still had some lanthanide concentrate in hand to uh, before we r reached the, the limit and so we started up again um, about a week or so before the end of December so that we could start to be filling the tanks. Um, in the meantime, and of course there was some production came out during that time which was not sold um, during the quarter, but which was sold uh, early in January. Uh, certainly on the SEG, um, we feel that, as we've indicated in the report, that it, it, is a better, it, it is likely to be a better financial outcome for us to continue to hold that stock. Um, there's no question that in China, and I think I've talked about this before, but you know the the u s China situation certainly has seeped into the the confidence right through um, Chinese industry. And uh, so we would expect that we'll get a normal improvement in conditions after Chinese New Year because that normally happens uh, in any in any year and we will retest the market um, on the SEG at that time. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Cathy. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, it is star one, but our next questionnaire is from Daniel Morgan from UBS. Please ask your question, Daniel. 
Uh, hi, hi, Amanda and Tim. Uh, can I just ask uh, a couple of things? So the you mentioned that you're now splitting ND and PR, and that's you know one of the key um, uh, great great things out of the report. Just wondering if, if you can give us any sense, even ballpark, about uh, the steady state volumes that you might do, like what ratio of ND and PR separator you might do versus an ND PR combined product, which you've been doing. Um, that's my first question, and then I'd, I've got some questions about the AELB bond. You know, what happens to that in a scenario, different scenarios regarding the waste? Thank you. Okay, uh, Daniel. Um, the separated ND and PR. Um, we have four separation trains in SX5. Each of them produces 25%. Uh, one of those has been converted to separated ND and PR. So we would expect about 25% of our uh, ND PR production will be in the form of separated ND and PR. Um, as we've indicated, we have uh, achieved on spec ND actually in the December quarter. PRs, uh, you know, we've, we've got some of that, but without yet the um, stability that we have had that, that we've achieved with the separated ND it's it's a more difficult material to produce which is of course why it, 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 it brings with it um, a price premium however uh, it, it is moving through it's not an issue for us by the way you know with this one of the neat things is we can simply blend material back in if it's if it's not on spec specifically, but about 25% of our production we would expect to be a combination of um, the separated ND and PR. Um, just a little bit more colour on that, in pure ND sells for about the same price as ND PR, pure PR sells for a slight premium. Um, compared to uh, NDPR. So we get a very small benefit in terms of pricing. The more significant benefit it is, uh, is that it allows us to increase share of wallet with our existing customers and they are welcoming that, uh, particularly you know, a number of our, our Japanese customers. Um, because it means they don't have to have a relationship with an alternate supplier. In terms of the AELB bond, the AELB bond is uh, designated primarily for dealing with uh, the PDF. It's often called the PDF um, bond. However, there is also some element of it which is related to a bond you know, towards decommissioning of, of, of the plant. Um, related specifically to any of the elements within the plant which have some level of, of radioactivity associated with them. So um, that's always, we, we've got a, a, a clear plan on those things, but of course any decommissioning is many, many years ago, away, decades, um, would be our intent. Um, as we reach a resolution on the management of the residues, and we use that term very in a very considered way, um, it, this is not waste material of interest when we think about when, when we look at it. Uh, I think it's about two and a half percent NDPR, which compares favourably to many of the deposits that. Uh, junior projects are seeking to develop. So we see this as potentially a valuable feedstock. It also has commercial value as we've demonstrated from our research um, for use as a soil conditioner. Uh, notwithstanding that, we would expect that if the resolution is either some some form of export or, or PDF um, resolution for the residue that there will be a release of funding that would assist us in um, funding that activity. 
Thank you. I'll uh, leave it for others to ask questions. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. And our next question here is from Matt Chan from Foster. Please ask your question, Matt. Oh, hi, Amanda. How are you? Um, my query is um, around, uh, just to clarify, the separated ND uh, went to existing customers in Japan. Um, and <clears throat> was that something that they'd uh, sort of been um, angling for or, or uh, asked for from you? Um, and then the other one is about mining campaign three. Uh, when does the mixed area concentrate from campaign three get to Quantan? Um, and does it have a significantly, or I mean, it'll have a slightly different profile from the campaign two mixed area con? Thanks. Okay. Hi, Matt. Uh, so the separated entities in Japan, did our customers want it? Absolutely. Um, so at this stage, the three shipments that we sent all went to um, one key customer and uh, certainly it's something which we have been discussing with them for at least a couple of years uh, since right. we started to get the, the, the plant stable and, and operating. So uh, yes, it is definitely something where we're responding to demand. We're not building it and hoping that they will come. No. So our ND is fully uh, committed, uh, as is our PR, although with the PR it does give us the opportunity to test entry into some new segments, including things like ceramics, for example, uh, which could be uh, very um, you know, financially uh, attractive. In terms of the mining campaign three, uh, I, wish I can't tell you off the top of my head exactly when it'll hit, but bear in mind we're still in the business of the overburden re re removal. Sure. So we sure. won't actually start the mining process, I think, until at least next month. Uh, and then uh, it will still take some time before that starts to be fed through the concentrator. Uh, metallurgically, uh, not significantly different, and I think that, once again, as we've moved through um, over the past five years, uh, we've understand our understood our metallurgy uh, much better, which has allowed us to balance the con grade in a way that is most suitable for feeding um, here in Malaysia. And uh, so that's included things like understanding not just the, the grade of the concentrate, but also the balance. We've discovered things like the amount of iron phosphate in it um, has a significant effect on our recoveries and cracking and leaching, those sorts of things. So we're not expecting that there will be any significant disruption, um, but uh, it will be some months yet before we see that material um, coming through to Quantan. Okay, thanks. <coughs> thanks, Matt. And our next question is from Andrew White from Curran & Co. Please ask your question. Hi Amanda, um, I just wanted to ask a question about the NUF storage given that uh, the 15th of February is coming up close. Um, just wanted to ask what tasks need to be completed by Linus to ensure approval of that storage on site and what are the expected outcomes if that approval is not received by the 15th of Feb? Thanks. Thanks Andrew. So we're working um, quite intensively with the DOE on this matter. Um, there are two, two areas that the Ministry has asked us to uh, pr proceed with as far as our action plan is concerned. And uh, so the first is the licensing of the premises um, as a prescribed premise. Now that requires the completion of some variations to the original EIA. The, it, we've been working on this for some time and the DOE, as I said, is engaged directly with us and some people may have seen the Instagram post from uh, one of the DOE, um, or three of the DOE representatives who were here on Friday. 
The second thing is that um, the commercialization of the NUF um, has been accepted as being, you know, and there's always been our position as by far the best uh, thing for us to do. Uh, reduce, reuse, recycle uh, should be our watchwords in the 21st century. And so the reuse of, the, uh, of this material productively um, is particularly uh, important. So we have at present, um, you know, several live projects with potential off-takers of the uh, NUF material, and that forms part of the action plan as well. So we're cautiously um, confident about the progress of the matters related to the NUF. Okay, and um, is there any uh, uh, consequences of um, not achieving that by 15th of Feb? Sorry to push that. Well, there would be, but um, we're not seeing that as a likely outcome. Sure, okay, thanks. And our next question is from Max from Old Peak. Please ask your question, Max. Hi, Amanda. Um, look, well done during the quarter, given the, uh, the potential um, distractions. A and I just really wanted to ask you a couple more questions on, on the waste management issues. Um, sorry, not the waste. Well, before talking about that, I wanted to ask you really about the comment you made in the release relating to uh, ongoing approvals as you ramp up production. Uh, some of these conditions in the operating license may require amendments uh, to allow for the expansion. So I just really wanted to know what, what type of conditions specifically might need those uh, uh, amendments. Okay, so Max, uh, thanks for the kind comments. This includes the approval by the DOE for the increase in lanthanide concentrate um, uh, processing. So you may recall that the AELB has given us um, an uh, approval for, um, the AELB has given us approval for an increase in the amount of lanthanide concentrate that we can import in, into Malaysia. Uh, we have yet to receive the matching approval from the DOE on the amount of lanthanide concentrate that we can process here in Malaysia. So that's really the key right. um, element um, as, as it relates to our licence. Okay, okay, got you. And, and relating to the uh, waste storage, or rather the, um, not so much the uh, uh, NUF, but the, the WLP, You've submitted a, a action plan, I guess, to to the ministry. Is that correct? So on the NUF, we have submitted a full um, action plan on the. Um, uh, uh, sorry, we have submitted a full action plan on all residue management. Um, we have not had all of that action plan uh, accepted or approved. So we now have a, uh, parallel paths. So the NUF action plan is specific to NUF and it has uh, the two key um, strategies that I mentioned before when I was talking um, to, to Andrew. Right. Um, in terms of the WLP, um, we do... We are engaged with the Ministry on a discussion around the management of the WLP. Um, any, as you would recall, the review committee made a recommendation that it be deposited in a permanent um, disposal facility. Yes. The Ministry at the beginning of uh, December gave an alternate um, set of conditions uh, prior to the renewal of our operating licence on the 2nd of September, requiring the export of the material. Uh, so we're working with the Ministry, understanding um, the implications for the different pathways, and um, 
we're cautiously confident that we will be able to meet, uh, uh, that we will be able to reach um, a, a resolution on this matter. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. And the next question is from Tim Hannon from Newgate Capital. Please ask your question, Tim. Uh, hi, Amanda. Um, thanks for, for taking the question. Um, I'm just really interested more broadly and, and generally about Malaysia and um, you know, what it's trying to achieve um, in its sort of, uh, industrial and its manufacturing base. I mean, we've seen some newspaper articles recently about their intentions to um, produce electric vehicles within the country. And um, you know, one uh, minister in particular even highlighting um, you know, the fact that uh, we're, we're, we're They've got rare earths and can produce rare earth magnets, and um, you know that's uh, you know the future um, of the of electric vehicle manufacturing. Um, so I just yeah, just comment and just your, your sort of your opinion to be really helpful for 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 us. To, I think to sort of understand on the ground what's going on in Malaysia. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Um, I I think. <laughs> I, I talk about this. Uh, I think Malaysia is throwing us a few curveballs and challenges, but you know what? I'm I'm not sure that it's any worse than if I was trying to run a business in the UK, France, um, the USA, or even on Christmas Day, I was at a family lunch and my sister-in-law's brother was there. He said, "Oh, I wish I was in as stable a political environment as you are, Amanda." And I said, oh, wh wh where are you and, and um, where are you working these days, Pete? Because he used to work in some quite exotic places like Bikini Faso. And he said, oh, the Queensland oil and gas industry. Um, <laughs> so so um, I, I, I understand that because Malaysia appears maybe a little more exotic, particularly to our Australian investors, it can appear um, a little more um, uh, confusing. It, it's, it politically is like just about anywhere on earth today. There are some voices of reason and there are some voices which are less reasoned. So certainly Malaysia understands the importance of building a strong industrial base and all of the things that we're asked to do as a foreign direct investor including employing Malaysians and developing skills and all of those sorts of things are seen very, very positively by those, you know, particularly ministers um, and others in power who are concerned for the economic well-being and, and, and of, of the population. And um, you probably are aware that we got new... Um, uh, Sultan in Pahang uh, last week and in his first speech as the Sultan he concentrated quite significantly on discussing the importance of economic development. Um, but as in every political environment today and not always is it the opposition that has an alternate voice, sometimes it's within the government and that's what we're facing here we have some alternate voices to that. And really the, the process which the government is going through here is, is one where it's grappling with um, managing a government which is four, a coalition of four separate parties, each of which has a slightly pos different position on um, different issues and so what we're really seeing is, is, is in my view is the government really going through the process of balancing you know sort of this economic development with you know its social impacts its, you know economic development and its social impacts with um, some of the other sort of uh, demands from other members of of the um, government. I think on balance that the Malaysian government has more voices which favour development than those which would see, um, you know, sort of a, a, a hiatus in that development. 
But it is certainly an interesting process as this coalition of, of four parties actually learns how to work in a way that delivers the best outcomes for Malaysia. No, thanks, Amanda. I mean, I suppose um, you, you, that's a point well made, and I think it's politics everywhere, even in, in Australia. It's just um, it's it's not unnatural and, and normal. And yeah, you know, um, well done so far for, for dealing and grappling with it. Um, thank you. Thanks, Tim. And we have a question from Jay, who's a private investor. Please ask your question, Jay. Hi, Amanda. Jay Erlinson from Colorado. Hi, Jay. Nice to sit, talk to you. Yeah, it's been a while. You're missing a good ski season out here. <laughs> yeah, make me weep. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the furthest thing from your mind. But, uh, anyway, anyway, keeping on the big picture uh, theme here, I was wondering if, what you thought about expansion. I know it's probably not the appropriate time right now, but uh, looking down the road, maybe five, ten years, where do you see Linus fitting into the industry? Well, actually, Jay, um, we, we can manage more than one thing at a time, and we are thinking about... Um, you know, I had lots of shareholders last year wanting to know what's next after next, and I, I asked everyone to give us just a little bit of breathing space uh, and, and to finish next first. But clearly, we are thinking about what does the business look like 12 months from now, 24 months from now, 36 months from now. And so... Um, in terms of thinking about our industrial footprint, um, at present we have an industrial footprint with you know, heavy concentration here in Malaysia. And uh, as we think about how we grow, we will consider whether you know, growth capital is best placed here or whether growth capital is best placed elsewhere. What we do know is that the market is going to grow um, what we also know is that our aspiration is to continue to be um, a leading supplier to the market, if not the leading supplier to the market over time. And we do know that we have a 25-year resource that's unmatched in terms of uh, quality um, and uh, uh, unmatched in terms of quality. So uh, we are thinking about this and we are thinking about how do we grow with the market and how do we ensure that whatever we invest, we are balancing out what I was saying to Tim before about, you know, there's sovereign risk everywhere. So how do we actually organise our resources in a way that um, gives us good risk mitigation in terms of any sovereign risk that we might face. Hmm. Okay, well, thank so you. I, I'm not going to tell you where we're going to build what, if that was what you were hoping, because <laughs> um, we have, certainly <laughs> have not resolved that, but we certainly are thinking about it. <laughs> well, make for good speculation on hot copper. Oh, I'm sure it does, but I'll leave the speculation for others, and we'll just focus on uh, um, we'll, we'll just focus on on doing what you're paying us to do. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Well, once again, thank you all for um, joining today, and. Uh, yeah, I look forward to speaking with you again at the end of February when we release our half yearly.